get your money's worth out of the thing. <laughs> so let's get on to writing. So we have talked about, what have we talked about? How to get ideas. Uh, we've talked about knowing what our story is. Um, you know, if you, you can have an idea, but an idea isn't a story. And you have to start with an idea. And that might be from a book you've read. Or you, you love a character and go, well, oh, if I had done this, this, or this, then it would have been a better character. And my, you know, I would like it better. So that we, we could see a TV story. We could see a, a, a newspaper article. We could be eavesdropping at a restaurant. You guys got to learn. You want to be writers, you've got to learn to eavesdrop. <laughs> it's really important. You got to listen to people around you and how they say things and how they express themselves and stuff like that. <clears throat> and um, you know, the, your ideas can come from anywhere. But an idea is not a story. And last week we were talking about taking an idea and how do we evolve that into a story. And that's by asking a lot of questions. Well, what if this happened? If I have a character that I love and a character, what kind of world would that character be in? Or maybe I've read. Um, a newspaper article and there's been a crime and there's something odd or weird about it that I your brain starts thinking well I could I could turn that into a fantasy world where this happened or that happened I mean ideas you don't have to read about a crime and say I have to write a murder mystery there, there's a whole lot of ways they can they can pop into something else and uh, yeah rainwater dialogue absolutely that is really really it's a really big one because half of our books have got to be dialogue yeah at or, some point. or more <laughs> Um, Probably most of them. Yeah, yeah that's, that's it's when the people are. They're going to be doing some, something, you know. Yeah, less, but <laughs> yeah, even dialogue, if it's internal, even it's if it's still just dialogue. what they're thinking, yeah, it's still dialogue. Yeah. So, we talked about how to take an um, an idea and evolve it into a story by asking a lot of questions. Why would a person be there? Why wouldn't a person be there? And if a person would never be there, then what made them be there now? And looking for those little twists and changes. And I think we used the example of. Um, we were talking about, you know, if you have a fairy that lives in the forest, well, do they all have to live in the forest? You know, just taking something from a different point of view. The, you know, could a fairy come from a, a desert? Well, why why would he be living in a desert? Do they all live in a desert? Maybe they all live in, in the forest, but this one lives in the desert. Why did he leave? Why did he have to do that? All of this other stuff. And I'm still waiting for one of you to write that desert fairy story because I want to hear it. Yeah, I remember <laughs> cool. He says somebody who can actually write far better than she will ever, ever be able to accept. She I has. I have no ideas. Is my problem. <laughs> uh, you, we, well, ideas are just you know asking questions till something comes up. So anyway, we talked about taking the idea and making it into a story. And the homework was to take a synopsis, just a hundred words or less, of a fairy tale or a fable, something that is very well known, and to uh, last conversation I've heard a coffee shop with three adults discussing is sponge. Puts a jerk. Now see, that's perfect. You take those three people and you put them into a restaurant or you put them in a situation that's where you've got a character and that's awesome. That's brilliant. So, and, and that's, we need to eavesdrop. You really, really have to learn to eavesdrop. And Tornado, I saw that comment about the gods and goddesses, so I will be looking for it, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, um, oh yeah, and somebody, Wicked, a ba backstory for a country isn't required to get into, into Quilbar. Absolutely not. I mean, I, we are creating lore, we are creating gods, we're creating a lot of things as we go, and this really isn't the place for that, but you're right. No, that's not required. What's required is what's in the rules. The required is the kind of person you are and whether or not we think how you like to play will actually fit what is going on in Corbyre now. I mean, the recordings you see, you, you see us in events, you see us doing big buildings, you see us doing whatever. What you don't see is just the kind of quiet day-to-day -day slog where nobody's actually talking to each other. Or <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, it, it's, it, the day-to-day -day reality of Corbyre is not what you guys see. And being a great builder, being tons of experience, being a writer who's already created, none of that's required. Being a person that may fit into that world is required, and that and that's the only thing. That's all. So off topic entirely, but um, you have to know what your story is. And sometimes we have these big ideas that ramble, like I'm rambling right now, all <laughs> over the place. The story needs to get down to that, you know, one sentence that says, "My story is about." When you can do that, or when you can get it into just a few sentences, it's a hundred words or less. Then you begin to know what your story actually is. So the homework for people, and I'm hoping some of these people in Raycall have actually done this is to take mm -hmm. any fable or fairy tale and write a hundred words or less 
telling us what that story is actually about. At this point, you got to cut away all the crap and go right to the heart of the plot. And ultimately, your story is what your character does next. Not what your character does, what your character does next. And what I mean by that is I could say, I have a character and she cleans house and plants a nice garden and everything is great and that's what she does but the story is a little na 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 okay um, what she does next is how she reacts to something that has happened to her I have a, a lady who has a beautiful house and she loves to keep it clean and works in the garden and a tornado took out half her house now what does she do there's your story is she going to fall apart and we end up having a story about how she's digging her way out of depression in a mental institute? Do we have a story about a lady who learns to become a carpenter because she can rebuild her own house from scratch? Do we have, you know, do we have a story about a lady who gives it up and moves because she's sick to death of the tornadoes and the story is about her, her journey along the way to a new life? So stories are about what characters do next. And Who's got some homework done in the rate chat? I do. Okay. Nina does. Awesome. <laughs> okay, Pokes, Permitted. you said her first, darling. Um, tell us which fairy tale or fable you're doing, and then read us your synopsis. Well, I did a fairy tale from Jack and Elsa, as in Jack Frost and Elsa, and I named it Ice and Frost, Winter's Love. Okay, all we need is the synopsis, so we don't, we're not looking for the story. I want a hundred words or less. Did, is it, it's got to be really, really short. Yeah, it's, a, it's like 92 words. <laughs> oh, brilliant. You nice. did good. All right, read up. It was midnight, with the moons in the highest peak. It wasn't a full moon that night. A thin, curving crescent graced the sky outside the window. Elsa sighed. She wasn't in the mood to sleep, not after the nightmares that haunted her dreams for every, in for months, every night. Not a single one. After events of the Frozen, she had gone back to the village of Jack the Overlord's forest. He had once lived and saw that Jack was there alone. She was in tears, never to have believed to see him again. Running towards Jack, she broke down in tears, sobbing, as Jack turned around for the first time to see her. He, he was approached. He, when turning around, he was approached and was knocked back to the ground, followed by a large thump. It was her Elsa crying in his arms. She had, he had wanted to see her for a very long time but yet had not the courage to go and see her. He kissed her passionately. And that's what I wrote. Okay. Okay, and you've you've brought up uh, you've brought up a point and, and I, I, I know I mentioned this last time and and, it, and this is just something that's always going to happen because I have a really hard time under synopsis. The word synopsis a lot of times can be exactly what you just wrote. Mm -hmm. It is a, just sort of a real quick overview of some main scenes in the story. Um, right. And, and that's, that's what you gave us. So if, if the whole, although it sounds like there should have been a little bit more somewhere. Oh, that, that, that was like in the middle of the story. Yeah, exactly. And, and what, what I was hoping for was like a whole the idea that we can take the entire story and just zoom it into one. Now you had some really nice descriptive writing in there mm -hmm. and we were talking about that last time too and uh, sometimes the synopsis can have a lot of that description in it because you want to be able to remember that when you're writing the bigger yes. book. <laughs> so it, it basically it's a tool that comes down to what do you need to be able to remember what the whole what the whole story is about and um, and they, they, they can kind of grow I guess what I'm going to use the word synopsis as being, there'll be sort of different stages to it. Um, the first one would be is maybe as, as simple as something as I'm writing about a, okay, let's say Jack and the Beanstalk. I'm, I'm writing about a poor kid who um, acquires something that takes him to another world and he got a whole lot more than he was bargaining for. You know, you, you could that could be the yeah. synopsis. Stage one, and then you could expand it into 
It's a poor guy who lives with his mother who met a guy along the road who was actually, you know, he got talked into buying a bean. It seemed like a bad idea, but the bean grew, took him to another world. He got a bunch of treasure. Yay. Now, the <laughs> next stage to it might start, you know, with the sort of description you did. And a lot of people do exactly what you did. So I'm not saying this is a good or bad or anything here. It's just there's different ways of thinking about synopsis. So the others, you know, we may have a very different range of what that word means when we hear these, when we hear the readings today. And I don't want anybody thinking, well, mine was right and that was wrong, because there's just different ways of doing it. Um, and then at some point, a synopsis, and I think I mentioned this last week, can actually become 30, 40, 50 pages. They actually become a small book in themselves because you're going through just a quick overview of chapter by chapter. And at that point, they're very much like what you just wrote. You've got some of the description. You've got a lot of the action that is happening. And... Um, you know, you've got, and you took a part of a story and just sort of did an overview for that. So, yeah, that's well, great. Well, actually, I wrote in like 10 pages. Oh, brilliant. Oh, wow. I see. Nice. And because we, so you did a whole synopsis, yeah. kind of a, a much yeah, higher range one, which is great. Yeah. And then because and we, I, cut, I stuck yeah. the 100 word <laughs> limit on, you get to read part of it. So brilliant. And you did a whole lot more homework than I did this week. So very nice. Thank you. That's good. That's really good. And Zen Trigger yeah, is Zen just Zen here. Zen 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 <laughs> Very nice. And he did his oh, homework. Yeah. Our kids, if you did some writing, darling, you get your Heine into rate call because I want to hear it. And I was just talking about you today. We got to talk here soon. <laughs> so, Nina, no, are, no. You, are you next? Is it my turn? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, here we go. I need you to turn your mic up for something a little bit. Well, I'm having a hard Why? time hearing you. And and we actually want to hear this. So. We do. That's thing. That's Sorry. a little better. Yeah. All right. Uh, Amnesia is the name of a world where mages read the memories of lawbreakers for evidence. A thief who does not know his own name is in the employ of a mysterious benefactor who uses his skills for unknown purposes. He is always found at the scene of the crime, empty-handed in places equally empty because of his talents but his memory is always wiped and he is never legally prosecuted. He continues to operate while covertly trying to find answers to questions. Who he is, who his employer is, and why he's being used. All right, see so that, and that, yeah, that, that, that point, yeah, again, it's short, sweet, you know how to start writing this story. Arkees, you are not in trouble. I just want to talk to you. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, exactly. That's, a, you know, you, you get an overview. Now, when you've written that, you have an idea of what kind of, of story you're writing. And I, I talk to people all the time that say, oh, yeah, I want to write a book. And it's like, yeah, or I'm writing a book. What's it about? And they wonder, and they tell you about the setting, and the house, and the scene over here, and the land over there, and this character, and that character. Yeah, but what's the book about? They don't have a clue. Yeah. It, it, <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and that's that's why we're all here today. Um, I don't know if Briarstone's managed to get in or not yet. He, he was, I thought he, he was having some computer or something wrong. But, oh, no. Um, not yet. Yeah, I haven't seen he's, him. He's, um, I'm going to talk about him while he's away. Might as well. First, yeah. you were talking about our yeah, case. Yeah, so he's secretly boosting. There you go. He's a really good writer. He's mm -hmm. He's got a lot more talent than I do. I mean, a lot more talent than he I do. He has talents in different areas than um, do. Yeah, I'll get it done. <laughs> and, and I'll tell you, one of the biggest talents you need if you want to be a writer is you got to actually finish a book. Um, <coughs> halfway there. there. Well, then you're doing a lot better than most of us. But um, he he has written, he's got an idea for, and I'm not going to give you any details because I really want the man to finish this and it's his, it's his stuff. He's, he's got a world that blows me away. You know, it, it's like Middle Earth amazing. You know, Middle Earth is a character in its own right. We've got the hobbits, we've got the elves, we've got the people we love, but the world, we love that world yeah, so yeah. much. And right. he's got a world that's like, Oh, incredible and awesome. you know yeah I, I think I think the, the book saw because there's enough for a huge series oh, yeah. there could be a astounding commercial success his characters they need to be movies they need to be <laughs> movies yeah they really do this guy this is set up for like black tell you motion, know Hollywood blockbuster yeah, huge um, yeah. he he writes really well he has scenes that are 
his action and his, it's just like it just snaps in his characters. You get inside yeah. his characters' heads so fast. In a paragraph, you're rooting for these people mm -hmm. and you need them to, oh my God, and you care. And he's had me crying at yeah. time. And he'll, yeah, he's good. He has a couple of characters. Oh, he's good. I've, written almost no, I've read almost nothing about them. And they're some of my favorite female characters yeah. in literature. Yeah. You read three or four <laughs> wow. pages and you cannot... I've this is he's got stuff he wrote two years ago and I cannot get it out of my head. Mm -hmm. I need this story. I need these characters in my life. I need to know what happens. But he doesn't know what happens. He can set up the world. Yeah. He can write twenty or thirty pages. It's an amazing series of scenes. It's grabbed you by the throat. Your heart. Your you everything's pounding. You're so excited. And then and it's like. And he'll hand me something, and then he'll hand me something else. And I go, well, how is all this going to tie yeah, together? Yeah. I'm so excited. And it's like, blank. Yeah. Blank. What do you That's mean tie it together? Where's the story? Well, what do you mean? What's yeah. the freaking story? Yeah. <laughs> you know? And he doesn't have a story. Yeah. And it's so making, he writes like me, then. He's making me he nuts. He has, like, big, <laughs> grand ideas of what kind of needs to happen in the world in general, but not yeah. day-to-day -day what is happening to these yes. characters sort of level. Yeah. So, you know, he'll go, oh, we can add this, we can add that, we can do this race, we can do this, we can do that. Yeah, yeah, but what happens to this guy? How does this guy know that one? Yeah. Well, what do you mean? Put the pieces together. <laughs> I need to know. <laughs> so That sounds very much like where I am. I've gone through a lot of world building, but as far as actually writing the characters and stories, that was the part I hadn't gotten to until I was hit with this 100-word synopsis of homework. And it really did help me sort of narrow down where I wanted to, you know, be the focal point of, of it all. So cool. Oh, my God. You just helped somebody write the book. Neither. If, <laughs> if that's the... If that's the only positive thing that ever comes out of this stream, I feel like crying. That's amazing. That's, that's awesome. really good. Yeah. <laughs> that's the... Cool. Well, well, thank you very much. No, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> uh, Zen, Ava Kamen, who's next? Wicked Fairy, you did homework. Read. Um, okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I just need to interject and let you know that this 100 word limit was terrible. That's For why, you? That's yeah, why we be. did it. That's why we did it. <laughs> and you know what? I, I have I thought about saying at some point when we've developed a little bit more of what our stories will be, I want, I want one sentence. I want one sentence. That can't be three pages long. Um, I have three sentences. Perfect. Uh, <laughs> Read them. Did you pick it? Did, was it one of your own stories, um, like the guys are doing, um, or did you pick it something? It is my only okay. story. Okay. Then tell um, us what it's about. A fairy prince falls in love with a little girl's figurine. A jealous lover in envy breaks the figurine. But love, the greatest magic of all, saves the figurine and turns her into a real fairy. See, ah, oh, see, got got awesome. little goosebumps here. This is this is like a classic fairy tale. You've got a big problem. You've got an unlikely situation, and of course, the story is all about explaining why that makes perfect sense. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But and and you're wondering as soon as you he fell in love with a figurine, and and my head is going, okay, why? What no. you know? What kind of guy is this? What kind of figure? Like there, there's a, there's a story yeah. there, is what I thought. So and and uh, Ray Ray, if 116 words is fine, I just wanted to make sure we didn't, you know, we didn't say like, just do something short and, and we have it be read for 40 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like 10 pages. So no, <laughs> wicked, and that's perfect. That that's the kind of thing when you've broke it down to that part, you know exactly what has got to happen in your story, and that's it's awesome. That's good. Mm -hmm. And it didn't start out that way. Um, I started off with bullet points. Yes. And then I started yeah, getting nice. really long-winded. Like, my synopsis before I nailed it down to that was... Yeah. 110 words. Okay, well, and that's not that bad. didn't even cover half the story. Okay, and it didn't cover half the oh, story. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So... And like I said, a synopsis, you know, like what Pokes did, he took out, because we had the limit, he took out a part, but he had did the synopsis for the whole the whole story. Mm -hmm. And they can be 30, 40, 50 pages. Yeah. And it's still not the finished story, because you're not actually writing, you know, what would be the difference? Having a well, paragraph... Kind of like a synopsis that you send to like a publisher or an, or an agent that gives sort of the layout of the be, book. It can be, yeah. 
but when, at 30, 40 pages, that's probably too long for a lot yeah, of people. Well, maybe. it depends it on depends, the company. Yeah. <laughs> but it helps you to understand what's got to happen in your story. Yeah, it's and like it's, story, storyboarding. <laughs> ca- yeah, it's like storyboarding. Yeah. If you. Oh, uh, what, what were those books that uh, schools used to ban for writing uh, essays? Uh, quick Notes or something oh, like that? Notes. Yes. Notes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes, Tornado, you can send you me a message and rate call whenever. That's fine. <laughs> so, um, Pokes, Aver Cammon, do you want to read? Pretty sure he said he was ducking out. Cause no. I don't think he's. I think Are you here in rate call? He said he didn't write anything in English, so. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, if, oh. if, if we don't understand it, then, you know, and that's okay. And if anybody, you know, we've got a lot of European people here, and if you want to use this as a way to learn English better, you know, you know, because that that was good English. Um, <clears throat> Briar's here. Hello. So, um, Sorry I'm late. That's okay. That's okay. Um, you should be. Yeah. Boudichon. Tally. Boudichon. Okay, Zen, read. Tell us what you wrote. Right, so, <laughs> I might have mis- uh, done this wrong, but I got, it's called Goldilocks the Destroyer. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> the dark woods are no place for a child, yet there she was, lost. Goldilocks, a seemingly sweet girl, was wandering aimlessly when she discovered a rather humble home deep in the forest. This is where her true colors began to show. The girl selectively helped herself to the forage chairs and beds she found, trying each one to be sure she found only the best to suit her. After destroying half the furniture, she decided to sleep in the most comfortable of beds. Soon after, the family of bears returned to their home and discovered the mess in mayhem. The disgruntled voices awoke Goldilocks, and she fled the scene, leaving behind the trio of confused, like, highly proficient bears. Goldilocks, the destroyer, escapes justice. I, I love it. Now, see, and that's, oh, that's, nice. that's like wicked, the, the play. You yes, know, you take a story, yeah, you a think you know, and you go, Kind of mess with it. Bit, I yeah. love that. That's it's good. exactly the same story, but somehow that puts a totally different twist on it. Yours sounds a little creepier. Now, R. Meg, what you said about writing a synopsis and then detailing it up to a story, that's exactly what I was talking about later. You know, at first you need to know your story well enough to ba- get it down to the bare bones. And once you've done that, then at least you know what your story is. Um, and it because you can write, oh, you can write forever and not have any idea what the actual story is. And uh, I think it's, to me, it's really kind of important to have a story so you don't just write 100 pages and then you go, well, I don't know what to do with this. And you never, you know, Which you're is done. how I write. You know, and that's, <laughs> that's what most of us do. Have I got a pile of those books <laughs> kicking around? So, yeah. So, Briar, did you do any homework? Did you want to read anything? I don't know if you, I, I should have asked privately, but I didn't know. On the spot now. A little bit. It's Briar. You probably just... Make it, it up. <laughs> I haven't had anything to write recently, but if you give me a moment, I can dig up something. Okay, well, we were talking about an overall synopsis of what the story is, either a fairy tale or a fable or something you're, you're working on either, uh, in your yeah, own. And everybody went um, with original work. Well, it, well, mostly. Zen, except yeah. his was an original slant on a fairy tale. Yeah, sure so that worked out okay. <laughs> that was good, too. So His was, yeah, I think Zen, you... you Typically, I had just the slant of um, like a news reporter. <laughs> Almost. Well, and and that's that's all the synopsis Hi. is. You wanted to find out, you know, what are we actually writing about? Like, what is the story about? Um, mm. um, okay, one of one of the stories I'm working on. How this one is supposed to be like a series, an ongoing series, so it's not a big blockbuster or anything. But how how would I read? See, I've never even done a synopsis for it. It well, is about. Not. A kind of an unsettled woman who, um, yeah, see, this is hard. This is actually kind of hard. This is a grown, a, a, you know, a mature woman who's who's been very unset. Yeah, see, I know what she is. I know how she is. I know what happens. <laughs> I, I actually have written the, the first draft for most of the book already. There's a few, you know, scenes in the middle because, man, the middle is so hard. The beginning, the first half is done. The end is done. And then there's that chunk in the middle that kills me every time. But um, how would I say it? So there's, there's a murder. She solves it. But 
Yeah, see, I would have to do my own homework. Yeah. Because to put this <laughs> down into a couple of sentences, I don't even know how to say it. Now, my other book, I've got down to one sentence. Mm -hmm. I know it, but I don't want to tell you what that is. No, things. Ray Ray did not. I did. Ava did not make a synopsis because Ava's worked so much overtime. And I have written. I have written. So many things. Maybe yeah. three, two or three thousand words in the last few days for other, okay. for jobs yeah. and for business and for things. Actually, probably more than that. Maybe about four or five thousand words that are published will be published, polished, finished. They're going out into the public. But I didn't do anything for my channel here. I'm <laughs> I'm ashamed to say. Aw. <laughs> I fail. Well, two people have sent me private messages with okay. things they've written. Do you want to read it yourself? Did you want to come into Ray Call and read it yourself? Or would you like one of us to read it? I, I had asked if they wanted to join. They could. And I reposted the Ray Call info. Tornado is doing homework and his teacher took it and ripped it up. So now there is a point. Do it at home. <laughs> um, yeah. Do it in lunchtime. Do it during, you know, recess yeah, or after class. school. You do it at home, but not <laughs> in school. I don't want to be corrupting the children of the world here. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Not, in, not, not at school. Not at school. Big nugget. Go with the dog ate it next time. Yeah, because then, because that's an original slant on it. Maybe you should say your guinea pig ate it because, you know, that they would be would. So, Ray, yeah, come into Ray Call if you would like to, for sure. Yeah, they're from Born and Ray Ray. And you don't have a microphone. Okay. Oh, um, okay. All right. Did you want us to read it? Did you send it to Ascension? Yep. Okay. Then well, Ray Ray actually says, I have two. So okay. take our pick. <laughs> um, well, you know what? We'll just we'll just read them both. I can see them here. They're, she she went right to the heart of it and made it short and sweet. Okay. He. Ray Ray? Ray Ray. I think Ray Ray is a he. Ray Ray? If I have that wrong, I apologize. <laughs> uh, Ray Ray, I'd, I'd love it if you would read it yourself. That would be brilliant if you want to come into to the raid call. Yeah. When you no, get into... work, doesn't have a microphone. Oh, you can't do it. But he said he could move into a oh. small room oh, if you want to. Oh, I didn't see that. So... Yeah, I know, Demonek. I wanted to learn and write and practice <gasps> writing skills, but you were um, right. I was wrong. I apologize. But um, <laughs> you know, not when they're supposed to be doing other things for their teachers. <laughs> so yeah. So is there anything else we have that was sent to us for us to actually read? Born naked sent me something. Born naked. You don't want to read it yourself? Oh, you're not in Ray Call. I I know. No, I I'm looking. <laughs> yeah, we can tell. <laughs> He, she, what's the difference of oh, that? that. <laughs> now there's oh a story. God. There's another story. I just right? feel terrible because I, I usually try to keep up with that and, and I failed. <laughs> oh, well. That's okay. My moderating is going downhill, guys. <laughs> well, I have an idea for Eva's story. You know about that mo a woman who basically went to go solve the mystery, uh, the murder mystery and all that stuff? Mm -hmm. What happens if there's clues left over that basically proves that basically the person that she uh, put to jail did not do it? The and that's basically that, written. and that's that's a good story too. I mean, yeah. that that's great. The the two that I'm currently working on, I I've already got. I I haven't did the, I haven't done the synopsis for the one. I'm I didn't do it at that level. I do have it much bigger, like a twenty thirty page thing. That story is completed. The other story is completed. I just have to start rewriting them. It writing the first story, you know, the first draft is actually the the easy part making it good because the first drafts suck I don't care how well we think we're doing they're complete and utter crap because you're just trying to get the story down and then you have to start polishing chapter by chapter and then paragraph by paragraph and then sentence by sentence <laughs> and and then you find out if you don't have a good synopsis if you don't have something logical this happened and then that happened because of that and then that happened because of that if it's not logical and you've written the whole thing and then you start fine-tuning it and you find out it doesn't work then you're really you're really messed up so um yeah. is essentially male or female they're wondering in and just sorry, sorry what someone actually asked that. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> did you guys oh, see I her t-shirt by the way I think yes. they mostly did. What could possibly but go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> she can have a dirt moment and go, uh. Oh, goodness. So, main idea so for my kingdom history. Born and 
Ray to read. I mean, I don't know. Ray, are you coming? I don't know. I think Ray is going to try to come. So, Born okay. Naked, are, we are supposed There's to no be reading set. yours then. Yeah. Is that for sure? Yes. I That's Born for has sure. No headset. So. Okay, go ahead. Then we're going to read. This is from Born Naked then. See, I told you she was going to expect me to read it. I can't. It's little. <laughs> I mean, I can't read it too far. Okay, the little creeper who could, who would, sorry. This is a story about a little green creeper who was spawned in a big dark cave many Minecraft days ago. The only things that would play with him were ender tots who cried and ran off to their parents, or cave spiders who webbed him. Not much fun in that. Then one day, the most wonderful being in the creeper, uh, the sorry. Then one day, the most wonderful being the creeper could ever imagine entered his cave. A girl with purple stripes in her hair, a pretty pink bow in her <laughs> on her shirt, a pretty pink bow in her hair, and TNT on her mind. And from that day forward, all he could think of was this magnificent creature. I apologize for tripping over my tongue a couple times. That's oh. awesome. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, you're gonna write this story because I'm just <laughs> saying. I I think we need we need this story. It makes me so okay. Here okay, okay. application. <laughs> has anybody? I don't have um, a membership application in at the moment, guys. I if I have got it open this time, so if I see it flashing because some new is joining, I will um, I'll get you in there. But nobody has actually applied yet, so <laughs> I, I will get it. Creeper love. I like it. It's creeper love. That's good. I wonder who the little girl was. Oh! Mm -hmm. mm, I know. <laughs> who could it possibly be? Oh, girl God, with TNT right. on her mind. <laughs> oh, that was yeah. fun. I actually want to hear this story, so you get writing. This is good. Is there anyone else? Okay, Ray is true. Warning may include goats. Yes. <laughs> Um, oh I have something I can read, although it's not my own. It's a synopsis? Is it good? Oh, yes, it is. is, it, who, is it, who does it belong to? Oh, the noise. The noise of... I, 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 could start, I could start reading it, and then you would uh, know what it belongs to. Okay, does it belong to Ava? Because she'll slap you. <laughs> no, it does not. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, I, I'm a little, I don't know. I, I think we should stick, I, yeah. do you have permission to read this? Or is it something in public? It's a synopsis. Oh, it is a synopsis. Well, that's what I said. It doesn't have to be about your own story. It's just a synopsis. Yeah, no, no, fine. Then do that. Hurry up. Okay. Read. One Thursday lunchtime, the Earth gets unexpectedly demolished to make way for a new hyperspace bypass. For Arthur Dent, whose house was demolished that morning, this seems already to be more than he can cope with. Sadly, however, the weekend has only just begun, and the galaxy is a very, very, very large and startling place. <laughs> Cackles in okay. the chat. That was awesome. All right. Um, perfect. Okay. That's a great. That's 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 good. That's not ex exactly a synopsis because it doesn't for our writing we we kind of need to know like i think zen zen did a great job zen did a great job we, it's a story we know so we know exactly how to compare that um although although thank you for that because that always makes me happy <laughs> oh, God. so what we're talking about is is creating something not to hook readers in that's a that's a really beautiful little doodah there because yeah all right we love it <coughs> But, um, you know, what's got to happen through the story? I see, Briar, what I'm hoping for you is I'm sitting here looking at this big old pile of your writing I've got here. I've got a stack like this oh. and stuff. I would love to see the synopsis for that one because then that would tell me what the story is. Uh-huh. And he says, oh, yeah, I don't know that part. He's like, yeah, I, I live stream a lot. I, I don't have time for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah. I, I do want to do some writing. I mean, it's, it's literally good yeah. for me because I have so many stories in my head. And that's one of the main problems, right? Yep. This is actually getting one. Getting them out. Getting a story. A story, not a bazillion and then never writing any. Just a story. Yeah. So, Ray Ray, um... Yeah, I can't get Ray Call working on that computer at work. Did so you want us to read or just read hold it for... One. Okay, then fine. Yeah, she's right, You've got that you sorted? Okay. Yeah. So, <clears throat> I'll try to read that slightly better this time. Uh -huh. I get nervous when people are listening. Don't like it. Noah believes the world is ending. The voice in his head instructs him to build a boat to save himself and his family from the coming flood. His neighbors laugh, amused by the crazy man building a boat in the desert. Then the rain begins. They stop laughing. 
Noah rush, rushes to collect animals, herding them to the, to the safety of the ark. For forty days and nights, the rains fall, the world is flooded. The boat is cramped, dark, and stinks of animals. His family is unhappy, but safe. The world they knew is gone. They pray the rain stops. That was awesome. I like that a lot. That's <laughs> no very dramatic, very kidding. captivating. Yeah. That's... You're going to be good at this game. That really That's cool. good. You and, and I mean, it's just a quick, you know, this happens, that happens, that has to happen. But you've just used just enough of those descriptive words mm -hmm. that make us go, oh. Yeah. So not only is that a good synopsis for you to write from, al although what, what I'm reading here, the ending would be that they, you know, you, you decide to end it when they're still on the boat and kind of leave that Maybe. up in the air. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I mean, you know, you can write more. You can, well, yeah, synopsis like a, for a new movie. Yeah, no yeah. kidding, right? But you've you've got enough in there, and, and this is really good. When when we're writing these things, there is often such a huge amount of time from the beginning of an, a novel to the ending. Mm -hmm. Using like like pokes, what you've done, actually creating some of the descriptions and, and Wicked Fairy, you've done you all of you you did those you got some of the bit of the, the the descriptions in there, just those few words that give yourself a sense of where you were going with it. Because as hard as it believe is to believe now, <laughs> God, you can um, you can forget. You can actually, was I going mean or cranky with that guy? Or was he supposed to be friendly? Like, oh my God, what am I doing with this man? So just having a few of those words in there so to set those pictures up in your own head will keep you remembering, you know, in, in two years or if you're really good at it, in eight months of <laughs> other writing, you know, you get to go back to that and say, oh yeah, I know where I was going with that. So that's kind of important. You guys did really good. Thank you so many of you for actually getting getting all this homework done. Oh my God, I love you to death for it. I this fully is intended brilliant. To try. Um, I'm tired all the it, time lately. <laughs> yeah, me too. Really it, good. If you don't mind, I have another synopsis I wrote. Absolutely. That's one of my favorite books. Now, oh, cool. good we go. There we go. Do, give us the name of the book. I, oh, I was going to say, I almost want to guess. Oh, <laughs> yeah, well, all right. A after I read, I, I will tell you. Okay. And I'm proud. This one's only 23 words, one sentence. Nice. Wow. A vampire, a vampire awakens after centuries of sleep to find a book written about himself, and it inspires him to write his own history. Cool. I and that's see okay. now you know what your story that's part, I don't know what good. the book is but that makes me want to read it. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. It's the Vampire Lestat by Anne. It is Lestat. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's what I would have guessed, but I thought you know <laughs> short I could be wrong. <laughs> sweet, you know exactly what the main point. You know around that then. Then I think it was our mag that was saying you just start making it bigger. Then you make it a hundred words. Then you you do what um, Poke has and you you flush it out to you know ten or twenty pages. Yeah. You might flush it out to even fifty depending on it. But at that point you're going to have every single scene. Now it looks like a lot of work for nothing because you're never going to use that. It's never going to be published. But when you sit down to write on any given day, you can just go. I don't feel like writing an action scene today. I just want something quieter, or maybe something descriptive, or oh, I'm all hyped. I want to, you know, get into battle and fight. All you have to do is you take your synopsis, you flip through, you go, I can write this chapter, and you know that this is going to fit with the rest of the book because your synopsis has covered that enough. So starting with that, this is what the story is about, and you need to know that because a lot of times. I, I'm stunned. I talk to people about wanting to be a writer, and everybody wants to be a writer and say, oh, yeah, I'm working on a book. What's your story about? And they, they can't tell you. Mm -hmm. they, mm -hmm. they have no idea. So you guys did really good. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about character building today. Shortly, I realize, you know what? I'm going to leave this up to you. It is, it, we are done with our actual Actually. time <laughs> for the day. Um, and I, you know what? <laughs> I think I forgot to start recording for Minecraft I or for, for, for YouTube. YouTube I did so I, Oops. damn it I don't have I don't have a copy of this stuff I totally failed um, but I'm gonna have the website up I'm gonna work a, go ahead sorry be some in the past podcast. I was gonna say there should be a way for you to um, cut it like download it from switch I'm not and sure. then be able to re-upload I don't know I've heard that before but when I actually damn, tried it nice. I I'll look. I'll look into that. But you know what? I'm going to talk. I'm going to start recording right now because we're going to talk about character development because that's going to be our homework for next week. So let me just get. 
and this is going to be short like about a 15 minute thing and maybe this is how I should record it all the time anyway <laughs> we'll talk and then we'll get on to you know like the, the next step sort of thing so give me one second and hey you welcome to relish every word we have been in the live stream for a while we've been reading some uh, synopsis of some famous stories and some made up of our own by the followers and members of this channel so it's been kind of an exciting day we've heard a, like a wide range of interests and lots of different angles and how things came you know how they came at it and it's all been it's all been really brilliant and thank you so much guys for those of you who have who did your homework unlike me who didn't do her homework so um, we are talking about character development today and we mentioned this earlier ultimately a story is about what your character does next oh. it's not about what your character does it's about what happens to them and how they react and we use the example of you could say you know oh my character loves to clean house and keep a nice, nice garden and everything is going you know good and and she made a great pot pie tonight but that's not really a story that's just a <laughs> thing and it's like not it's not very yeah whatever I know bad ho not doing my homework no time um, the story could be same thing and then a tornado rips up half her house now how is she going to handle that the story is does she become a carpenter does she learn a whole new skill in life so she can rebuild her house herself does she fall apart end up in depression and our story is about someone struggling through darkness and coming out of living in an institution perhaps does she decide that you know she's had enough of tornadoes and she's just moving to an entirely new country and our story is about her learning the language and trying to fit in and going through culture shock and all the rest of it so the character is not the story but you can't have a story without a character and I mean, if your only character is a world a, a globe that is sentient and we're hearing it the story from inside of the earth as people destroy it that's still a character and the story is about what your character does next so we need our characters and we really need to know a lot about them and there's kind of a fine line between I know enough about my character, my main characters at any rate, and oh, I'm going to continue playing with this because that lets me feel like I'm being a writer, but I never actually have to write my story because <laughs> that's the scary part. Characters are fun. Building characters are really fun. Um, Essentia has sat down with me on many occasions and flipping through, I'll, I'll tell her about a character that's in my head and you know going through old magazines and cutting out pictures of people. I can put that on the wall. You guys can't see this, but right here above <laughs> my desk there is a massive big bulletin board and I've got pictures of houses, I've got um, flow charts of characters and their relationships up here you know I, I and I put character pictures up here so if I want to describe somebody I can look up and go oh yeah that's kidding and I've got it so that works for me and I have a lot of notes I've got the mock-up of my first cover it's right here in front of me <laughs> so, yeah, just little things to help me remember that I actually want to be a writer when I grow up right <laughs> so building characters is so easy and fun says demon act but he's one of the smartest people in the world so just well, he might be being sarcastic. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> That's the bad part. It's probably not. So, you know, what do you know about your character? And a lot of the things I'm going to say today, you know, I'll never use that. But you really don't know. I mean, you need the broad strokes. And a lot of times we start with characters. Um, and we have just, you know, somebody we've read about. And we think about how we would change it. And go, oh, and I love that person. That person would be so cool to be around. It would be so much fun. So we, you know, we want to write about them. But the obvious the color of their hair how tall are they what do they weigh uh, where did they go to school where were they raised <clears throat> do they have a really mouthy sound dog? effects by ballot do they have a really <laughs> mouthy dog because it can make a difference and, you know are you footloose and fancy free you got a dog boy does that change your life mm -hmm. um, but you, you need okay. to know those big basics and those are usually we know we know that already but are they right or left-handed what kind of food do they like to eat um, Tell us about how they were, you know, do you know what they were like in high school? Because things that happened in high school is definitely going to, to you know, determine who they are today. What previous jobs have they had? What are their dreams? What's stopping them from reaching those dreams? Is it something they're doing to themselves? Is it outside issues? Does it look like it's outside issues, but it's really something they're doing to themselves? There are so, you need to know all of those things. And you, you can write them down, and as I get... I was working on a kiss for luck today, and you know what? I will try to get back to that tonight. Um, 
and I'll have a place where you know like character sheets where you can just fill in questions just just answer the questions and fill in things what kind of toothpaste do they like do they like peppermint or do they just always brush with baking soda do they brush their teeth let's hope they brush their teeth yeah, you know that's okay. good yeah. um, is their hair long short why why is it long or short is it long because they feel that that you know <laughs> right <am> I? <laughs> It was like right here. <laughs> um, you know, and, and Ray Ray, exactly, of how oh, characters oh, approach each awesome. other. That's that's really good. Right. You know, and we learn about our characters. Well, let's, I'm getting ahead. We need to know. We need to know everything we can possibly think about. And you need to say, what would they do in this situation? What if something like that happened to them or something like this oh. happened to them? Even if it's not in the story. Because when you're actually writing it, even though you know what's going to happen, you've got all that. You can have every scene and every every single paragraph, you know, or every page. This has to happen on that page. That has to happen on that page. When you actually start writing it, you're going to come into all kinds of places where you have no idea what that character would do. And if you don't, is it going to be consistent? Are you going to make the same, you know, kind of the same slant six months from now when you're writing about that character again? We want our characters to surprise people, but we need them to be believable. And if I have written an entire story about somebody who has got a, um, you know, an anxiety disorder and literally has never left her house, and then one day something happens and she says, well, I'm not putting up with that, and she walks out the door and goes to take care of it. Well, I feel cheated just saying it. It's like, no, that would never happen. Maybe it would happen, though, if we have hints. If we know the backstory of this girl is there's a specific reason she's not left her house and there's going to be one thing in the world that will trigger her into stepping out and getting it done. If you know that already, if you've written that backstory that will never get used in there, you will have written her in such a way there will be hints. There will be clues. There will be little things in there that when she does that, will go, yeah, of course. Oh, my God, I'm so excited for her. She finally did that. And we'll believe it. But you really have to know who your characters are. And um, you need to ask a lot of those questions. Now, that's the big guys. And you have to know what they want and why they can't get it. And hopefully what, maybe not even, ha you know, what they're going to do to get it, but what they're, what character traits do they have that will allow them to get it? And not everybody's perfect, and we're not going to even like perfect characters. We like the people who get angry, who get ticked off, who stand up, who rage sometimes, who get mad and throw something at the wall, because we've all felt that. And if we get to live it through somebody else, we can love those characters for, for, for the things that are so-called bad about them. We can end up, That can be end up what, what makes us love them. But, of course, they do have to have something about them that redeems them from just being jerks. <laughs> you know, I'm emo and depressed and miserable and like to cause trouble. Isn't that somebody where you know, it's like, oh, my God, somebody's threatening, threatening to shoot them. Yay. Would you just kill them and get them out of my life? You know. Yeah. So they, there's got to be that balance that makes them real. Now, if we can surprise people with our characters, that's brilliant, too. But, you know, we'll get to that. Now, there will be a lot of characters you don't need all that backstory with. If you need to have a waitress come up and she has two or three scenes and she has a really important line she has to deliver, we need her. We got You can just write her in on the fly. And it, it, doesn't, it doesn't hurt, though, to find out what, if I need a waitress, what could be different about her? What could make her stand out as a real person? Does she have a funny accent? Do we see her getting frustrated just before she has to bring that message to us? Do we see that she's got her kid hidden in the coat closet because the babysitter didn't show up? She, and if her boss finds the kid there, she's in trouble. You know, you, you can have just, and it just takes a line. It just takes a line or two to make her real, make her count. And, you know, she answers the phone. She's writing the message. She tells her kid, get back, honey. I don't want, I don't want the boss to see you. And then she puts the phone down and says, and she, my kid is there, but I've got to get this message to that guy. Give her a little conflict. Find her. Fix it. Just a sentence or two where she runs over to get the message. And all of a sudden, you get a, a much more interesting character than, uh, uh, here's your paper, sir. Bye. And walks away. Now, sometimes those little tiny characters can can surprise you. <laughs> and they become a lot more important. And then you're going, stop. And you have to write, you know, whatever they need. But 
you know, create your characters, ask a lot of questions. Why are they doing this? What was their backstory like? What was their childhood like? What were their problems there? If, if I say, oh, I'm going to make them afraid of snakes, well, why? Why are they afraid of snakes? You can just pop that in, and then you'll say it one day, oh, they're so scared of snakes. And it's like, yeah, whatever. You know, Where nobody, yeah. You, but if you know why, you can you can say she's just scared of snakes, and then later on you can have somebody else say, well, of course she's scared of snakes. Remember the time when we were kids and so and so through, you know, and whatever. Yeah, sometimes so, it can be really subtle, but as long as you know what it is, you write it in a way that comes across yeah, more believably somehow. It it does, yeah. <laughs> and I I can't even say I always understand how that happens, mm. but it it really it can really make a difference. So for next week. Can I get this up in time? Can I get this up tonight? Oh. I'm going to post some character list things you can fill out for characters. Character questionnaires. Que like a questionnaire, just up. pages. I'm sure that, you know what, I'm sure there's lots Ooh. of them online. I bet you have, um, okay, she just found a cool link. I'll look over that and maybe I'll just put links to them for you. And I'll put them, I'll just put a post right on the front page of Kiss for Luck right after this. Um, yeah, with DMX saying, if your character does something out of character, you should know that. Yeah. You yeah. need to know that because if you're not, not uh, your readers are going to. They're yeah. absolutely, If something just know. sticks out like a sore thumb, they're going to yeah. be able to tell. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody who's always been brave is suddenly scared. Well, why? Yeah. yeah. You know, and you maybe there's something it. about that situation that is why they're scared. But if you don't know that. <laughs> yeah. And having them be right-handed right along, or not even saying that, but explaining it in such a way that we think they're right-handed and then you well the right hand got chopped off but they shot a, you know got the guy right between the eyes of the gun with their left hand and we're going would what would do time yeah you what know just <laughs> i have written characters in and forgotten what color their hair was supposed to be and i've got some other character who just loves blondes and oh yeah mine's dark shoot <laughs> i forgot <laughs> oops so <laughs> you, you need to you ha need to have a lot of backstory. I think you, you really got to spend a lot of time on all of your main characters, yes. and don't make them carbon copies and of you. And your antagonists and everything. Yeah. Yes, don't make them you. Everybody's got to have their own. You can't have them kind of all wanting the same thing because you're not going to have a whole lot of conflict going on, and you're not going to have any surprises. If you have one person that wants to rob the bank and one person that doesn't want to rob the bank, you got a pretty straightforward conflict. If you have a third person who doesn't really care anything about the bank at all, but is in somehow involved with this and only really wants to go to Jamaica, <laughs> you know, but we don't know that until they're all right there at the door of the bank and the one guy just says, yeah, I'm going to Jamaica. Now the other guys have got a problem. I, I mean, you, you need to have, they need to have their own lives, I think is the thing. They've got to have their own goals. And you, if you know their backstories and they are diverse enough and then you put those three people together, you're going to have surprises. You're going to have conflicts that you haven't even thought of yet. So really creating these um, these different, you know, really create them as standalone people. If uh, here's what I do, because I have a I have a hard time making sure everybody else has their own goals. I know what my main person always wants, but the others get a little wishy washy, and they um, especially if they're a smaller role. <laughs> yeah, or even even when they're the bigger ones, they can be. Yeah, I write the next big character, you know, even though they're, they're the antagonist or there's some support character or whatever, if I were going to write that character's book, if they were the main character for a book, how would I write out all the things that they need to do and all the things that they want and all the things that are stopping them? Then it becomes very personal. I look at it from their point of view, their family, their friends, their whatever, and I forget this other character entirely. Then when I bring them together, it works. It works yeah. so well for me that way. But I have to actually kind of shift into, I'm just, you know, let's pretend the main character doesn't exist. This is now my main character. And how do I develop that? And then when you've got enough of those, you've got enough people for a story. So we will post some things. And we want some characters next time. And I may just ask some random questions. Well, what would they do in this sort of situation? I'll come up with four or five questions and just say, what would, okay, you're going to tell me about your character, then I'm going to say, what would they do in this situation? What would they do in that situation? And see how well you actually know them. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. And I'll do, if you, I don't know if I need to have a character I can do that with that I haven't already done that with, but. <laughs> hmm. Must be someone somewhere. 
one of the stories. There's got to be one somewhere. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I'm going to say goodbye to the people in YouTube. Guys, thank you so much for being around. This is what we're working on, and I really encourage you to come over into the live stream in Twitch because you can come into Great Call. You can read your work. Um, we are. I will try to have the Kiss for Luck channel page or website oh, done within a day or two so that we can actually start using that to compare things in here and getting some real feedback on actual sentences and how they're working because we're going to need that yeah. we're going to need that really soon as we start writing more descriptive things and and we uh, you know what the idea of dialogue um, can I have my manager make me a note dialogue okay. for next week because it's big you can't you can't write without dialogue and uh, someone was saying that some of the dialogue wasn't sounding the way they wanted to so I'm going to dig out some bad ones and I'm going to dig out some good ones and we'll talk about what makes them different so for you guys on YouTube please leave your comments like subscribe all those good things and do come over to twitch next so week and join in till I see you next time live your life happy build it beautiful bye bye and we will cut that one off eventually <laughs> Four weeks. And we're still in <laughs> we're still in Twitch, so yay! Before we end the actual stream, mm -hmm. um, I believe Pyro has joined us again, and he was the one who said he sent you his bit in email and was hoping to make it back before we read it. All right, then <laughs> let's do that. Let's do that for sure. So you have can to you um, come in to rate call, or did you want he us to read it? it to you, apparently. <gasps> okay, did you want to read it yourself now that you're here, or do you want me to read it? And that t always takes like forever to catch up. Yeah. But let's put that down and see what I have. And apparently I have logged out of email. I wonder why. <laughs> oh, because I restarted yeah. the computer earlier. That would do it. So who am I looking for? <laughs> oh God, there's a lot of emails there. Um, <laughs> Well, Pyro Tiger is the username, but <laughs> Pyro. yeah, there's. So, what's the whole Pyro Tiger? Um, what is he it? He says he'd love to join us, but he's only just installed Raid Call now. So I guess it'll take a few minutes to um, sign up and log in. Yeah, it doesn't take very long. It really doesn't. It doesn't take very long. Raid Call is really quick. Post our. Um, actually, do I have it there? No, I don't. Hello, D. Malak. I had it, but I had to... Hello. Hello! Yes. You got something you want to read for us? No? Maybe? Yeah, I can do that. Awesome! awesome. Okay, yeah, I need 100 on. words in office. There it's, you go. Uh, it's just, it's more like the first chapter of a book that I wanted to write, but That's I've only okay. written the first chapter. Okay, go ahead. So, a young man cuts down a rotten tree for firewood, but the tree was home to a demon who punishes his laziness by transporting him to a desert, cursing him to count every grain of sand. An enemy of the demon appears, offering a contract to free him in exchange for half of his life. He agrees, but the demon finds he cannot break the curse. Sensing opportunity, he negotiates the jinn into granting him the ability to count anything instantly via magic. Lost in a foreign land, he falls into a series of adventures, abusing his new power to survive. That's awesome. That's cool. <laughs> nice. I can have this book now, please. I, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's awesome. Our, our Meg, you know, I love your accents so much, guys. I, I really wish you had some idea of, you know, North Americans, we hear ourselves and we sound so dull. And then Europeans have got all these beautiful accents and you're all like music to us. Much. It's like, please, please share your accents. You have no idea how much joy I get from European, this. European, Australian, so, <laughs> New Zealanders. Oh, my Jeez, thanks. It's... <laughs> Oh, we like it. We like it. Tornado, you keep right, typing in caps, sweetie, and they just keep deleting it. You can't. You you can't do it. You will never get away with it. Nightbot <laughs> kills it automatically, Nightbot and it, like it just it. doesn't work. So you might as well take your cap locks off because it's never coming through. <laughs> oh, darling, <laughs> don't judge me. <laughs> oh, you sweetie. <laughs> See, that's his character right there. Always <laughs> typing cap locks. Oh, 
goodness. Ava Cameron saying a Flemish accent. Oh no, that's not music. Yes, except we've heard you speaking, and we do think so. We like it. I think it's so brilliant. It's good. Yeah, and the, and the whole hundred word limit. The hurt from is not good. If it, if it's you know we say a hundred words and it's three, I'm gonna shut you up. That's not gonna work. But oh look, I has a flashy. I have. Um, why is it not showing? Okay, a little strange. It takes a second. Well, there it's, it is. Oh, there we go. That you really are weird. now part of our raid call group. You have. A so, no, you don't. <laughs> Pyro, what you're going to do, you can see you are up in the lounge, and farther down the list there is one that says recording here by invite only. Just come on in. That means it's a rumor. I do a lot of recording, so don't come in here unless I've asked you to, but there's no password. Just come on in. All you have to do is double click where it says recording here by invite only. If you double click on it, it will move you straight into, um, straight into the room that we're all in. And I know it takes like a minute for that to even get through, right? So, look, we has a screen. <laughs> a screen. <laughs> you guys are so much fun. <laughs> yep. Uh, you know, as soon as I leave here, I just want to start writing. It's just like, I just want to write now, and I've got all this website work to do. But <laughs> Pyro is here. Pyro Tiger, please say hello. Please. We have to, like, set things up still or something do you yeah when you get your microphone going we can't hear you if you have said anything he's taking something i think oh just a minute working on yeah, it okay yeah. thank you sorry i'll just, uh, I'll just shut up so Aver Cameron was saying can someone you know entertain us during during sing. while we're waiting sing for us and wicked saying she is saying she only sings for donations sing. now <laughs> unless she feels like <laughs> Ooh. So Emma saying, my father always told me if you do something well, never do it for free. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, Ray oh, Ray, awesome. awesome. Thank you for coming to join us. So I'm hoping you've heard the same thing. Just click on recording here by invite only. Now you guys, you get to come in here and use this. You don't only have to wait for streams. The lounge is there. Uh, if you're part of Quillbriar, then there, you know, you'd be using that. Uh, recording here by invite only is just kind of my little place where I hang out. It doesn't mean I'm in here just because I'm in here. But yeah, I, I'm often talking when I'm in here or doing something, but there you are. Um, and Ray Ray, you just have to double click on recording here by invite only and you'll be in the room with us. That's brilliant. Mm. Oh, puppy. So, I'm actually supposed to be at work today, but my cousin phoned up and said cancel. Um, yeah. Your answer on raid call. I, d Tornado, you know I'm in the middle of actually live streaming right now. I'm not running around reading messages. So, A, I haven't read it, and B, I, I certainly haven't answered it. I'm sorry, and I, I certainly won't be doing that during a live stream ever. So I will be looking for it afterwards. But I, yeah, I haven't seen it, or, and I won't. I won't till I'm done, so. Curses! Four foiled curses. <laughs> there is a push to talk button. Actually, if you look in the bottom right hand side, it will say push to talk or free talk mode. There's a little arrow. Um, yeah. Don't you have to set up your push to talk? I button? found it. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hello. Hey. Hello. I'm so sorry for all that carry on. I'm, I'm here now. Not a problem. Yay. Not at all. Another new voice. So, fun. <laughs> so you're going to read some homework for us that he did. That's I'd love okay. to, yes. Do you want me to do it as Briarstone? Amazing accent. Oh my god. As Briarstone? I'm conflicted oh, because oh part of me people. wants. Oh, yeah. yeah. oh my god! Okay, you didn't do it. Uh, what is this? <laughs> that was tricky. Sorcery. <laughs> what is this sorcery? <laughs> Do it again! <laughs> okay, oh, sweetie, you may have been a little late getting here. You were worth the wait. <laughs> oh, oh my right. goodness. <laughs> Briar, it's, it's the highest form of flattery, I, I assure yes. you. <laughs> it's awesome. Briar will be talking about how awesome it is that someone is 
is, is learning to impersonate him all night now, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, I love him. Can we keep him? I'm sorry, sorry, I interrupted. Why just reading in, in the chat, Zen Trigger says, I love him. Can we keep him, please? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay, anyway. Oh, oh, good. Not now. We're going to hunt you down. Yeah, you're not allowed to oh, now. That was brilliant. <laughs> okay. Oh, God. I love it. That was awesome. Okay. So, read in any voice you want. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll try and keep it neutral, but now I'm... Uh, 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 I'm all exhausted. Um, okay, here goes. So it'll be pretty obvious what this is a synopsis of as soon as you hear it, but I've tried to give it my own voice as much as I could. Am I good to go? Yes, absolutely. It's all yours. Thank you. <laughs> <sighs> a young queen, beautiful but vain, begets a daughter. Pale skinned and sable haired, clearly destined to be her equal in beauty, as the princess matures the queen's vanity narcissism, then paranoia, and eventually schizophrenia. Driven by horrifying voices, the queen abandons her to die in the forest. By chance, the princess happens on a remote commune in the wilderness. The group of deformed outcasts agree to take her on as a housekeeper, but through magic or madness, the queen hears of this and sets out to kill her, this time with a poisoned apple. The beautiful princess, assumed dead, is taken from the dwarfs by a wandering prince with dark intent. When he inadvertently rouses her from a coma, the princess insists they marry, enabling her to engineer revenge on her mother. Unaware of her identity, the queen accepts the princess's wedding invitation. She is immediately captured and tortured to death in a grisly show trial, revealing the dark character of the newlyweds' relationship and their incipient rule. Wow. Yeah, very nice. Oh my goodness! Wow. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you. I, 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 look at Zendry. A little heart. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> wow. Oh my goodness. There is no words. There are only emotes. Thank you. That that <laughs> oh was God. like, Thank wow. You so much, guys. Yeah, oh my goodness. The, the reaction in chat is is lots of exclamation marks and even more hearts and. That's a really good synops synopsis. I can't talk. And oh my god! Oh and my god. goosebumps! And <laughs> <laughs> grandmother, is that you? Yes, child. <laughs> um, I'm <And> sorry. <laughs> War thirteen thirteen just got slapped by Nightbot for saying more. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh my god! That's really Next good. Time I'll do it with Briar, I promise. Next time he's Oh my God! Well, I, oh, darling, I am I am so glad to meet you. I mean, I want this. That was great. Thank you, <laughs> Thank I am you too. This is such a pleasure to be here as well. Thank you. Oh, this is good. You're going to come hang around, right? You're going to be back in Ray Call oh, again. Oh, I'm here to stay. Don't worry. Yeah. I'm glad to hear that. I think to start most wonderful popping into the Ray Call more often so and hear all these. Awesome yes, places. you you know I was looking at I was looking at this the other day and the lounge had this long list of people. There were people from Crowbriar and wow. the district and from ESO and some people for just from the channels who have come over and started talking and it, it's like oh thank you that that's oh exactly goodness. what I'm hoping is going to happen here. So what yeah. have you created here, Eber? It's incredible. <laughs> I don't know, but it I I don't know. I don't even know where this stuff's coming from, and it's not me. I mean it's 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 a group effort. This is. It's people like you showing up, and I, my God, I, it's so exciting. I keep saying I, and I, I got, I just got to keep saying it, guys. I got to keep putting it out there into the universe, and you guys are going to be my witnesses to that, and, and start sending all the energy to the right place. <laughs> I want to get up every morning and do a live stream and get to spend time with you guys because I'm. I can't even tell you how high this makes me. <laughs> it, it's brilliant. And I thought it was going to be so scary and so horrible and so everything. And I am I love it. And I am meeting the most incredible people. Tornado, quit worrying his little shy. Just shut up and write something and get in here for next week, dude. <laughs> so I, I'm just meeting wonderful people. And I, I want to get up and do a live stream every day and then spend, you know, an hour on websites because i got work I need to do do some recording for my channel, play games with you guys, and then spend the afternoon writing. 
I, I want that life. I want that life so bad because you guys make it so much fun. <laughs> you guys make it so much fun. It's great. So thank you so much. And Ray Ray, you're in what? here. Do you have something to read for us? Well, I already read hers. But oh, you already read hers. That's we, right. We can Boy, say hi. hi. You can say hi. Ray Ray, say hello. <laughs> Well, can I say hello? Does this work? It, it does. does. Yes, it does. Hello and greetings. Clear. <laughs> greetings. Yeah, do it. Do it like Briar. <laughs> <laughs> I can only do that in my head. <laughs> That's a new requirement for me. I can't even do it in my head. <laughs> greetings, you people, and hello, my keen. Nice. Briarstone. Everyone oh, knows it. Everybody yeah. knows it. <laughs> Hello, Marquine. How's it going and how's it been? You guys are so cute. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, that oh, God. Yes, it was so good. I'm so amused. I just made a very unattractive face on the live stream. Now, Demon Act just asked a really good question, and I, I could sit here and literally, I could just sit here and talk to you guys all night. I love this so much, but, you know, let's focus here for a minute. He said, the homework for next week is to make a character. Make them it can be for a book you're already writing, a book you want to write, or just make a character. It can be just something to throw away. It's a practice. It's great. It's wonderful. <coughs> but you want to create a character. I'm going to come up with a group of questions. Now, the first people who get asked this will have a bit of a head start because all, everybody else is going to be able to hear it, and then you can write it in quick, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to come up with... Uh, maybe even 10 or 15 different questions and ask everybody one or two there mixed up. So everybody's yeah. going to have different questions, but yeah. basically I'm going to say, okay, you, you tell us a little bit about your character. Now I don't want the whole thing. You have green hair or green hair, <laughs> green hair and blue eyes. Um, you know, we don't need all of that. You can just say, well, it's a, it's a man who works in a pastry shop and uh, he's always wanted to fly to the moon and you know, he lives in a, maybe he lives in the future, and now that's a possibility, and, you know, just give us a little bit. Just, again, keep it down to just two or three sentences about your character, but you have to know them well enough. When I say, okay, well, what would he do if he found out he had a twin sister, and um, she was the person who was going to be the one to decide whether or not he gets to the moon? How would he approach her? So, and then you get to answer. And then you have to know your character yeah. well enough to be able to answer that. Yeah. So, I'm just going to come up with a bunch of questions and then see if we can, you know, um, actually know who our people are. And that's going to be a little bit harder than you think. Because <laughs> I'm sitting here thinking about a book I have already completed the first draft of going, oh, can I do that? what would I do? <laughs> So I'm going to be doing this for myself this week. Absolutely. Well, to be honest, those those character questions that I have pulled up yeah. so quickly, the reason I found them so quickly is I found them months ago and bookmarked them for you. For me. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And characters sound easy, but like I said, I find the first part of the book, I know the character, I think, oh, I got this, and I write the first part of the book, and I know what has to ha happen by the end to have everything solved. And then I get into that kind of from one half to three quarters mark. There is always a section in the middle there where I find out I don't know my characters near as well <laughs> as I thought I did. <laughs> and then because I don't, things start to fall apart, and it's really hard to know what they're going to do. And Ava Cam and you know, just call them all Joe. Y tomorrow is, or next week is just about, uh, the middle is hard. <laughs> See what Demonac just said? That's exactly <laughs> how I feel about it. <laughs> oh, God. No kidding. Well, I always, I always know a lot about my story, but the problem is the more little points I have, there's still a middle in between each of those points, and Me sometimes too. it just breaks down. Me too. Exactly. It is exactly the same. I think I have, you know, I realize I, I, I think I've got every single paragraph, like, or scene by scene. This scene, that has to happen. This scene, these two people will talk. This scene, that person goes there, and I think I've got the whole book done. And then you start to write it, and you realize it's like, Huh. Oops. And it's always that one half to three quarters part. It just, man, it gets me every time. Every single time. So I'm hoping you guys get me through this. Oh, that light is so yes. hard. Right. So I'm going to leave. You guys know your homework. I will post it on the front of uh, a kissforluck.net and put some of the links that um, Essentia has up here. And I will be trying to get more tools like that into the website and and I'm really hoping that by next week it will be 
well, I, I, with any luck at all, I have nothing to write for a month for the job. Unless there's another surprise. Honestly, the last two were surprised. So what do I know? But um, I hope to actually get some writing done this week. Oh, God, that's so cool. <laughs> so, quick question about this. Are we just creating the character? Are we writing you know, a paragraph with them in it? Or are we just describing them, just creating bullet points okay. or yeah. like a list one? How, however you want. Bye, Mom. <laughs> Um, just, I want you to give me like just two or three sentences that kind of, my character is, you know, a guy who works in a bakery who wants to go to the moon. You know, that's all we need to hear. You can write as much or as little as you choose, yeah. but I'm going to be asking random questions about random situations that will come up. And you know what? If you guys have ideas for that, you could help me out here because I have to do not only the homework I give us, I've got to do the homework for the channel too. So just random questions. If this problem came up, what would that guy do? So I may take some of your questions to ask other people if you send them to me. That'll be fun. So I'll just... Cool. Um, yeah. It's a neat idea. Yeah, so you guys could help with that if you think, well, you know, what would, if this problem came up, or if that problem came up, or if this situation hit them, how would they handle that? Because we really have to know that about our characters so that they stay consistent, that we actually know who they are. We'll just have to keep track of who has sent what questions because you don't want to ask oh, people the questions they yeah, sent. Yeah, because they'll know, I right? know, and I will. <laughs> I'll, I'm going to just make a list. And say this, you know, and so I make sure I don't ask you your own question back because you'll have thought about it. Um, oh my goodness! I think know. she means it. I think she means it. Here, so. chew on my hand. Oh my! Good girl. Chew on my hand. <laughs> yes, Aver, Aver Cammon, There will be. Um, oh, she heard that. She's looking out the window. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, oh, I'm working on putting up forums, or at least right now, I think on the, the kissforluck.net page, I think I can make, just make a post, and then everybody can just post, post, post after that. I don't know if there's an actual forum set up on that thing or not, and if there's not, I will be looking to get stick one in. But yeah, I, I want that to really become a, a, an action place where we can um, actually write something so somebody else can say, I love that sentence. Okay, that one, I don't even know what you're talking about, you know, and, and actually help us to become better writers because that, that's what I want. I want a finished book this year. I want something that I've got up with, a, you know, a contract with Amazon and you guys can say, you know, send me a signed copy or, you know. I. They you know. will all want that. <laughs> yeah. And Katie It'll wants so you to awesome. do an auto yeah, your book of your books. Can, I, can I request that we hand a letter? <laughs> Actually, for you, yep. yes. Absolutely. <laughs> I will bring your book to you. <laughs> Reminds me, I need to talk Absolutely. to you about Boston. But anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no kidding. So I'm going to go, guys.